embark on this research, which, uh, by the way, I did with uh, Professor Aida Moiga and, uh, and Professor Angela uh, Cielo from uh, UP OU. I really didn't know much about the agricultural practices. So, uh, what is uh, good agricultural practices or gap in, in short? It's, uh, it's a concept that refers to practices that address environmental, economic, and social sustainability for on farm processes and result in safe and quality food and non food agricultural products. There are many other uh, definitions, but this is a very good definition from FAO. That's why I, I use this one. Uh, this uh, gap is actually a code of practice which consists of four elements involving food safety, produce quality, environmental management, and rigorous health, safety, and welfare. Now, these uh, elements can be achieved through a list of practices. And mind you, there's a long list for each one. Just to give you a brief overview, I'll just give you a few uh, practices. Uh, for uh, food safety, uh, these are practices in the farm. Human sewage is not used for production of any fresh produce destined for human consumption. You must have heard about uh, some farmers using their urine to water or fertilize the leafy vegetables. So, you know, uh, the vigorously green uh, growing pechai. <laughs> They must have been watered with urine. You know? But in good agricultural practices, this is not allowed. Harvested produce is not placed in direct contact with soil or the floor, which is a very common practice among our farmers. You harvest from the field, of course, you just put the uh, produce on the, well, on the side of the beds, of the uh, seed beds, and then are ready for collection by those who have baskets, uh, uh, carrying, carrying baskets. Domestic and farm animals are excluded from the production site. Uh, this is a very common, I mean, animals in the farm, leaking or even urinating on some of our produce. It's a very common site. And this you know, they should be excluded from the farm. Toilets and hand washing facilities are readily available to workers and are maintained in a hygienic condition. Well, normally, the entire farm is the entire toilet for farmers. The application of chemicals is reported for each crop, meaning there has to be a lot of work that should go into record keeping. Who did what, who applied the chemicals, how did you apply the chemicals, uh, the date, the rate, the method of application, all of this should be recorded. Now, for the other gap element like produce quality, here are a few of the practices that are uh, required. The employers and the workers should be trained to a level of appropriate uh, to a level appropriate to their area of responsibility for chemical application. So you cannot just apply haphazardly all the chemicals. You need to be knowledgeable about the chemical application, the uh, uh, active ingredients, and the proper way of applying this, and also the disposal of the materials that you uh, of the, uh, the, the proper disposal of containers of these chemicals. Produce is removed from the field as quickly as possible, but to maintain the quality of the produce, 
don't want them drying out under the sun. Equipment, containers, materials that contact windows are regularly cleaned and maintained to minimize mechanical damage. And uh, liners are used to protect producing containers and rough surfaces. Uh, especially, uh, you know, in, in our country, we use the uh, uh, cutting, uh, and they have rough surfaces. Uh, well, the farmers normally use uh, banana leaf or uh, you know, sapo, sap to uh, uh, to wrap the produce to protect them, but uh, other farmers don't really bother. Another element, workers' health, safety, and welfare, the practices that are required, among others, are uh, hygiene instructions are visibly displayed, provided by way of clear signs or even pictures, or they should be in the predominant local language. <coughs> Uh, facilities and first aid measures are readily available. So, uh, normally in a farm, you don't have this. Most of our farmers do not have this, especially the small farms. And of course, when you spray chemicals, you need to be in suitable protective clothing. Goggles, hat, long sleeves, boots, face masks. All the work. I'd like to show you a picture. Uh, this is um, a sign with pictures showing how to use pesticides for bananas. Ang pahina timon sa luwas na paggamit sa pesticidyo sa panahin. And uh, here's my team posing on the uh, sign here that says um, <coughs> Pagbalo sa tuwang musulot sa kumpanya I cannot understand it Maybe uh, somebody from you the now Yes, please, thank you If it's announcements, I mean, uh, reminders to those who want to go into the country Thank you very much uh, Can you also read the red one? So, where did this 
code of practice come from? Well, in 1997, Europe GAP, a common standard for farm management practice, was created by several European supermarket chains and their major suppliers. The aim was to harmonize or bring about conformity to different standards of suppliers because suppliers will uh, require the uh, uh, farmers for uh, di different, uh, they have different rules, different standards, supplier in one region will have a different standard, another uh, supplier from another region will have a different standard. And this would confuse the farmers. So that's what they did with Eureka. They harmonized the standard so that the farmers can follow only a one standard. Ten years after that, Europe Gap became Global Gap to reflect the increasingly global scope of uh, this standard. Then uh, the Asian region uh, developed its own uh, code of practice through the ASEAN Secretariat, and uh, they call this ASEAN GAP. And this is also for fruits and vegetables. So the purpose of the ASEAN GAP, aside from uh, you know, just following what Europe GAP did, is to enhance the harmonization of national GAP programs within the region. And um, like Europe GAP, it wanted to enhance fruit and vegetable safety for consumers, sustainability of natural resources, facilitate the trade of fruits and vegetables regionally and also internationally. Now, the research, we, we did the research with the following research questions. What is the extent of adoption of GAP for selected signature products in the Philippines? We only did two products because of uh, fund constraints. What are the drivers of and constraints to gap adoption? What's the nature of the business or farms which have adopted gap? And we also wanted to determine whether the gap adopters were really performing better in terms of profitability and sustainability relative to farmers who are not uh, practicing gap. We also wanted to know the costs and the risks associated with gap adoption. Our chosen areas, commodities, and study areas are the following: uh, banana from the Davao region. The Philippines is the world's second biggest banana exporter and uh, the only Asian country among the top five exporters. That's why we chose banana. And we chose Davao region because it accounted for the majority of the country's total volume of production and the total area planted to banana. The other commodity is, wow, mango season right now and uh, we chose Zambales. Mango is the third uh, most important food export next to banana and pineapple in terms of volume and production area. We chose uh, Zambales because the sweet Elena which originated in Zambales was declared by the Guinness Book of World Records in 1995 as the producer of the sweetest mango. They have this measurement of the uh, bricks, uh, bricks uh, and they were able to determine the sweetness of the mango. Now, the Philippines tells its Asian neighbors with respect 
respect to gap adoption. Uh, let's look at the practices in other countries and certification and reduction rate there. But in Japan, they already have uh, farms which are UREC GAP certified, about 90 producers for this cooperative. There are others, of course. In Malaysia, if you look at the bottom seal there, that's uh, Malaysia's best uh, seal. It's a brand which is internationally accepted. They have 150 farms that are certified. And in 2005, there were 930 applicants for certification. Thailand also has uh, thousands of farms which are GAP registered or uh, GAP certified. Taiwan also. And in China as well, they have the China GAP. Now, uh, let's look at our country. It's uh, sad that the gap certification in the Philippines is in its infancy stage. It was only in 2005 when the guidelines on the certification of gap for fruits and vegetables army were formulated and enforced. Uh, there are, however, four GAP certified farms in the country. We, we talk about thousands of farms in our Asian neighbors which are GAP certified. Well, we have four in our country. And maybe we should clap our hands for these four farms. My God, despite all the efforts from the government, four farms. These are the Monte Philippines, which is a corporate farm. And uh, plus it's a growership program for pineapple. There is a basic necessity in uh, Tagaytay for lettuce and herbs. Then there is a cooperative uh, whose members are agrarian reform beneficiaries. I'll tell you about them later. They are uh, raising cardaba banana. Ito yung mga cooking banana, kita natin sabat. And Yoni Agri Corporation in Nagasina, which uh, grows various leafy vegetables and herbs. However, there are another, there are in other countries thousands of applicants. In our country, we have seven GAP certification applicants. One is a pineapple farm, it's a single proprietorship from Dayaka Marinas North, Norte. Another vegetable farm, I'm sorry, I cannot tell you the names. Uh, single proprietorship, Dahilayan, and this is in Dahilayan, Inman. Another pineapple farm, it's a growers cooperative in Labo, Marinas Norte. And two mango farms, <coughs> single proprietorship in Zambales. One of which, uh, I mean, one of these uh, mango farms has been uh, processing the application since uh, 2010. So I do not know if it has already been granted the certification. And another mango farm in Ilocos Norte. Oh, there's another one in Pakistan. So you can see how many mango farms here. Now, let me tell you about the cooperative which members are the agrarian reform beneficiaries. It's uh, the Carp Ardava Integrated Inland Farming in uh, Suluk, Mindanao. Uh, uh, they were able to acquire certification for GAP through the assistance of an NGO, the Strategic Development Cooperation Asia, or SDC Asia. Their field of certification was uh, granted for March 7, 2011 to March 6, 2012. Now, I do not know if they have applied for a renewal. 
So these uh, are some of the members of the cooperative. The one in the middle is Mr. Nick Dempo, the chairman of the cooperative. He is holding the GAP certification. The other one that I told you about is um, has been applying for certification for his mango farm is Mr. Anthony Abad. He's from Iba Zambales. He used to be the provincial auditor. Uh, so he's well educated. He has a big farm and uh, he's quite forward looking. Uh, and he has been tapped by the Department of Agriculture to be a, what do you call this, a farmer uh, innovator to demonstrate how a small farmer can get a GAP certification. So he has been, he was uh, being assisted by the Department of Agriculture in terms of uh, information and also assistance was given in, ter uh, in terms of um, chemicals that he must use for his, uh, and then fertilizer for his farm. So there was a funding for him. Although the problem with this is that due to bureaucracy, uh, the funds are not re have not been released on time, and there has been some quarrels among the uh, people involved in the dissemination in, in the control of the funds. Because initially, they, the Department of Agriculture was uh, looking at region. Three, Ilocos, and uh, they went, with, but they could not find any farmer there. With uh, they, they were actually looking for a farmer with a good farm size and with most of the infrastructures already in place because it's very difficult to start from scratch. One of the infrastructures is of course the toilet. You need also a, a shed for which you can keep your the chemicals. You need a, a shed to keep your tools. You need a shed to um, pack or sort your uh, harvest. So there are many infrastructures needed for this. So they wanted somebody who already has this in his farm. And Mr. Antonio had this. However, unluckily, he was not from Region 3. He, he was from uh, Ibas and Valdez. The funding went to Ilo Ilocos, and then from Ilocos, it transfer land to Ibas and Valdez. That's why it took so long for the funds to come. And sometimes, it's time to fertilize or spray some chemicals, the mangoes cannot wait, but the funds aren't coming yet. And that's why it's taking too long for him to get the certification. He had two hectares with 100 trees. Initially, they, uh, they looked at a 60-hectare 60 60 hectare farm. In, uh, located in a mountainous area. However, uh, the typhoon, I think, destroyed some of the fruits. And also, there was not a good road that goes to that place. So they shifted to the two hectares, which is closer to the town proper. And this is uh, more manageable. It also had all the uh, most of the structures necessary for the uh, adoption of yeah. So, what are the drivers for gap adoption? I told you how difficult it is to um, meet the requirements because we need to build the toilet, we need to buy uh, protective clothing, and you know, our farmers don't really bother to wear this clothing. One of the farmers we, um, we uh, interviewed said that, you know, when we are spraying, chemicals for flowering, for flower induction of mangoes. Um, sometimes they need 
I mean, if the tree is so huge or so tall, they need to uh, use ladders to climb over the canopy and to be able to sp spray chemicals over the canopy. And if they're wearing boots, it's really very difficult for them to climb because when they're you know, barefoot, it's easy because they can feel the, the steps, but with boots you cannot feel the steps. So, and they're not used to having footwear when they're climbing. Also, the goggles get misty. So I remember when you're spraying, the, the drip, the spray drip will go to your goggles. And it's very cumbersome. Also, uh, it has, um, it's, it develops some moisture inside and they cannot see very well. So it's very difficult but very cumbersome. They said, we don't care whether we get the smell or we, we inhale these chemicals. Because um, between that and falling off the uh, ladder, I think there's a longer uh, term of, you know, mas mahaba yung horizon nila kung yung ma-inhale ang nila yung chemicals kaysa if they break their neck when they fall, it's a death. Alright? So, these are a very, very difficult. Also, uh, I, I will tell you about the, the, the other difficulties later on when I talk about the uh, constraints. So, what will make you um, adopt, what will make a farmer adopt good agricultural practices? Well, the first, there are many actually, but the first major one is export market requirements. Uh, we'll discuss this later on. Uh, government initiatives and support, non-government initiatives and support, individual and corporate culture. The first, uh, okay, I'm sorry, let me go back. I have to discuss, I thought I had a discussion here. So let me discuss, uh, all right, export market requirements. Uh, there are a lot of uh, suppliers here, or assemblers of foods, or exporters, who are actually requiring their growers. They have farmer suppliers of mangoes and uh, they require their growers or mango suppliers to abide by certain uh, standards. Like for example, uh, they tell them what they dictate the, the uh, brand of chemicals that they will use because um, the chemicals, uh, you know, the, ex uh, the export market have their own requirements, uh, like the MRL. What is MRL? It's a maximum residue limit. Uh, so uh, we can use chemicals, but not too much. We have to meet those MRL requirements of uh, countries which we export to. So the suppliers, the mango exporters, tell their farmers to use this chemical and they train them how to use these chemicals. Uh, they also uh, tell them how to cultivate their mangoes. Like for example, mangoes are bagged. Nilalagyan ng support. Is there any foreigner here who will not understand uh, Filipino? Oh, okay. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry. Now, uh, bag meaning uh, the mangoes uh, are placed or are uh, uh, brown bags, like the ones we use for uh, peanuts when we buy peanuts. These brown bags are wrapped around the mango fruits. Can you imagine a full canopy of fruits? You have to wrap this. So um, there will be, um, you know, uh, farmers can hire people to do this. So you have to wrap each mango and then uh, put a stapler to cover this uh, mango so that the mangoes, when they are harvested, are flawless. The skin, just like when you had a facial, right? It's flawless. You don't see these types of mangoes in our market uh, because they are not sold here. They are sold in the export market. 
well, there might be some because these are the uh, rejects. Those that do not meet the standards are sold locally. So you can imagine the mangoes that we are eating are full of chemicals. Maybe they did not meet the moral requirements of the export market. We eat them. Okay? So, uh, what else? Uh, so, it's, it's very difficult. That's very difficult to do when you have to bag each mango fruit. Uh, so, what's this? I think it's Hylas. Hylas is uh, an exporter of mango. They provide the bags to the farmers because the farmers will tell them we don't have budgets for uh, for the bags and so the mangoes don't come out flawless and so just to make sure that they will follow Hylas will provide the farmers the bags but they will have to pay for that later on when uh, the payment will be deducted from the uh, payment of the company to the mango, uh, for the mango produce. So the, when the export market requires this of the exporter, the exporter requires these standards to be followed by the farmers. And therefore, whether you like it or not, then you are, as a farmer, will um, try to meet these standards because your products will not be bought by the um, by the exporter. Now, they may not these farmers may not necessarily uh, uh, get or apply for GAP certification, but their operations can be called GAP aligned because they are following the standards for good agricultural practices. They just don't have a certification to show. Government initiatives. Well, uh, the initiatives from the government are uh, mostly developmental. Uh, they have actually um, most this um, gap adoption has become an imperative for or gap certification has become an imperative for governments because they would want that in integrity to be uh, to claim an integrity to be selling. Uh, various products that meet international requirements. Also, due to uh, uh, agreements, bilateral agreements and um, regional integration, uh, these governments require that uh, the produce coming from each country that they are trading with will meet the international standards. GAP, for example. So, be because of that, there is this um, imperative for the government to encourage crop adoption among uh, the farmers. There are also non-government initiatives or support. Well, um, non-government or not-for-profit organizations, marketing uh, associations, industry associations, even assemblers, retailers, uh, some of them have this uh, social responsibility or part of their mandate to assist uh, farmers. And what they do is to uh, inform the farmers of this initiative, which is uh, the code of practice, and they assist them in complying with the requirements, just like what SDC Asia did with the Cardaba farmers. And then, of course, there is also individual or corporate culture. Mr. Atemi Abad is one of the forward-looking farmers, uh, single proprietor of cattle, sheep, and farmland, who has ventured into this. Well, uh, of course, you cannot give the entire credit to him because he was actually attacked by the government, and the government has actually helped him uh, pursue that certification. But, you know, you cannot just convince any farmer to pursue this because of the big use process, not to mention how costly the process is. Uh, if you are a forward-looking individual and you have 
the uh, export market in your horizon, then it would be very easy for you to be convinced of adopting the process, uh, adopting the, the practice. Because for small farmers, mango farmers, for, for instance, if they don't uh, intend to export their products and their products are bought by people like us who do not know any better, then, you know, why spend for a certification if all your products are bought by the market anyway? It's absurd. And sometimes, uh, more, more often than not, our supply of mango to the local market is uh, sometimes full of, of uh, the, there's more supply and there's more demand than supply. So, you know, why spend for that certification? But uh, if you're forward-looking and you have the um, export market in your horizon, if uh, you are innovative, aggressive, like Mr. Atenia was, then it would be easy for you to go for certification. So what are the constraints? There are numerous constraints to GAP adoption and GAP certification. But I can um, group the major ones into four categories. The first one is knowledge constraints. Then you have cost constraints, process constraints, and reward incentive constraints. Now, I don't know if I discussed this in the slides, but let me go back if I haven't. Um, now, knowledge constraints. As I uh, earlier said, uh, there is a low level of awareness among our farmers. They don't know what gap is. And for those who have a bit of awareness, uh, there are, they have many interpretations. One of the farmers we spoke to said that uh, he knows about gap. It's a brand of clothes. <laughs> okay? Some say, uh, yes, we know about gap. It's uh, wrapping the mangoes in peanut bags, or even uh, some are using uh, bags made of newspaper. So, well, at least that's a little bit right. Uh, and so if they don't know anything about it, or they know very little about it, how can you adopt something that you know very little about? And awareness is one thing, familiarity is another thing. If you're not familiar and you're not so to the idea, then how can you adopt such a practice? Next is cost constraints. I'll show you some com uh, calculations later on. I'm sorry, I'm running out of time. Um, cost constraints are um, very expensive. I'll show you later. Uh, you see this, this is just a pile of records. Monitoring, chemical application, fertilizer application, inputs inventory, production record. Many of you, our students, always say that uh, farmers, very few farmers keep records. And if you have to keep a voluminous record like this, uh, you will be discouraged to really pursue certification. You need to list down everything because uh, you need, uh, why are you doing this? For traceability reasons. Uh, uh, you need to uh, write down when you apply the chemicals because if there's anything in the batch of mangoes, let's say more bananas, which has been, uh, what do you call this, uh, not been accepted, by the exporter and you have these trace numbers, you have the labels there, you can easily trace this to whoever raised this mango or where the contamination came from, when the contamination happened. So that is a, 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 vital, uh, a vital information that you need will be coming from this records. Now let me show you some costs. Mr. Abad, for his 103 uh, trees, 
spent 81,200 pesos when he practiced that. And these were uh, for additional laborers for cleaning the farm, and additional uh, supplies for bagging the mangoes, which is 40,000. This includes the labor because you need to climb the mango to wrap each mango fruit. And among others, fertilizers, chemicals, and he needed to extend his packing house. He had an old packing house which was uh, 40,000 pesos, but he needed 15,000 more to extend this structure. All right, he said he bought only the, uh, he bought this protective gear from Ukai Ukai. So he only spent 1,000 pesos. So that's more. However, I cannot tell you whether he gained from this because when we finished the research, he has not uh, harvested this uh, mango. He was to harvest, we finished in December 2011, 2012, I guess, 2011, and he was to harvest the mangoes in April of 2012. For a corporate farm, Sumitru, they spent 9.7 million. Uh, this is a huge farm, and uh, they use this for wastewater treatment facility and nine packing plants which was 970,000 already, all right? Um, okay. Now look, I haven't discussed the process constraints, no? The, the process is, when you apply for a certification, you need to have to show that your, water, that your soil and water are not contaminated. So you need some laboratory testing, you need to bring samples, or what they do is that they can contact the uh, uh, concerned agency and the agency will send the people to take the samples, soil sample, water sample. If the water sample does not pass the requirements, then you have to treat your water and then condition your soil to meet the standards. And so you need to wait again for another testing. So it's a very tedious. Training also for workers, very tedious. All right, so there are many uh, requirements. So our, um, our recommendations are the following. Um, each of this uh, strategy is should, it's not a standalone strategy. It should be a major part uh, of a set of interventions so that we can obtain the greatest or the maximum benefit from these synergistic relationships of these interventions. One is the push and pull strategy. Um, there are many relevant players, there are relevant players for the GAP program. And these are the ones who are affected by and who can affect change. And they are categorized into three dimensions. The demand dimension, uh, which are comprised of the consumers buying these uh, products, retailers, processors, importers, and governments. There is also the supply dimension. These are the farmers who are raising these products, the workers, the cooperatives or associations, and also exporters. And the third dimension are the uh, entities which um, actually, how do you call this, um, try to connect the demand and the supply dimension. Um, So what is this uh, push uh, and pull strategy? The uh, former, uh, the government is pushing for the adoption of uh, GAP in our country. But then it's not enough to just encourage the farmers to adopt uh, good agricultural practices. Because 
even if they do that, the local, there is no demand in the local market. The small uh, mango farmers cannot really sell this um, 30, uh, certified products in the local market because uh, who among you knows about that? Uh, we know about organic, you uh, know about that, yeah. But uh, organic produce, there is a good demand for organic produce. But for GAP certified products, there is no local demand for it. And so, who will be willing to pay a higher price? Or who will be willing to pay for a GAP certified product? Nobody. Therefore, if there is no demand, why go for it? So, the, uh, have, we have to encourage the demand side to help and demand. We have to create awareness among the consumers about GAP and the benefits of this so that we can cultivate demand. And if there is already a demand, then they will pull, pull these suppliers to supply GAP certified products, like what happened to organic products. Now, the, the push strategy, the push strategy can be done through um, value creation. This can be, uh, what are the strategies for value creation? Focus on the tangibles. Well, uh, we can see uh, that there are attributes of a product like uh, uh, color, color of the mango, yellow, uh, shape, smell, size. These are very easy to see and they are very tangible. However, there are intangible uh, things, and these are the processes. Many of us are, uh, more, and, uh, more and more people are clamoring for crops and vegetables that have been raised um, without chemicals. We are clamoring for animals that have been treated well in the farm. So these processes are intangible to us. And these attributes are called credence attributes. We cannot see them. And so how can we believe that these products underwent all these good agricultural uh, operations or practices? We don't know because we cannot see this specifically these processes in the produce. So to make this tangible, we can rely on um, uh, what you call this branding, seal of approval, and if you put that, you are actually telling people that these products safe use. These animals have been raised well in the farm. These um, vegetables and fruits uh, don't have so much chemicals in it. You can also use multimedia approach. Uh, there has been a lot of seminars and trainings that have been conducted by the lead agency uh, in GAP, it's uh, BAPS, Bureau of Agriculture and Forestry Products Standards. They have trained, but they train uh, farmers. Now, some farmers do not appreciate these trainings uh, because they have to go from their house to the training area and they will have to spend uh, to be able to go there. So what we recommend is the use of multimedia approach, um, like text. Most of the farmers have cell phones. You can use text me messages to, uh, dis uh, to disseminate information. You can, uh, the, the government can also think about using other media, like uh, the public radio and TV programs. And they might even get a uh, celebrity who can endorse uh, gut certified products. Um, so here is a, a, a gut certified product being displayed in an expo, right? And this is a comic uh, type of information. Um, this was done by SDC Asia 
and very easy to understand, you know, it's easy to understand comics. So this is uh, how they disseminated the information. So it was easier to understand and more enjoyable to read. Um, I told you about branding or labeling. Uh, you can uh, be gap, fill gap. We have a fill gap, fill fill gap. We have a seal, fill gap with a, I think, with a check on it. And farm, uh, farms which are gap certified can use this to uh, for, for their products. So that when you see the product, you know it's gap, uh, that seal, you know it's gap certified. Uh, so you have this um, certified practice. Uh, Good, good agricultural practice. These are the seals that are available from other countries. Then the last one is capturing volume. Uh, we have to harness whatever we can take from government, non-government agencies, and other associations that are relevant to gap adoption. So. Uh, we can intensify field gap certification campaign for corporate banana farms. Uh, the corporate banana farms in Davao have uh, gap aligned operations because they are exporting, so they have aligned their operations uh, to gap. Some have, uh, like uh, Sumifru has been global drug gap certified. Uh, they were applying for renewal. Uh, then there is uh, unique fruity is uh, forest, uh, Rainforest Alliance uh, certified. And we are also uh, suggesting to the government that uh, if the operations of these large uh, farms are got, uh, already gap aligned or gap certified, then maybe they should automatically be given gap certification. They need not apply for gap certification, they should be given automatic certification because they already meet the requirements in the export market anyway. Also, we can identify farmer innovators for faster gap adoption. You know, uh, to see is to believe. This adage is uh, usually very uh, much needed for uh, new technologies or new practices. So if there is a farmer who can demonstrate that he can easily adopt to this uh, code of practice and he's earning from it, then others may follow suit. Also, uh, the meager resources of a farmer with a small farm. Uh, you cannot afford to pay for gap certification. Although the government of the Philippines has waived gap certification fee, but later on, when this becomes uh, chargeable, the, uh, the farmer will not be able to afford this. And so if farms that are adjacent to each other, the farmers uh, that have farms that are adjacent to each other, can form a group, then they can share costs and responsibilities for the getting a certification for that one contiguous farm, which is composed of uh, neighboring areas. Also, you need not necessarily build a tile toilet and uh, really uh, use uh, concrete materials. No, you can use whatever is affordable for as long as you meet the requirement. So you can build a toilet which is made of uh, just a simple wood for as long, uh, I mean, wooden structure with a toilet bowl for as long as there is good running water and good drainage. Uh, for example, this one has been used by the cooperative. This is what we use for tagging. It's a simple um, wire with a piece of cloth. This uh, tells them when the um, chemical has been applied. So very simple. They just innovated on this. Um, this is a washing area made of scrap, uh, scrap uh, GI sheets and uh, you know, uh, that uh, some bamboo walls, huh? bamboo mat. Uh, that's what they use for the wall. It's not 
really that uh, expensive for them because uh, farmers have their own resources in the farm and if they can use that, why not? And do not um, uh, encourage them to look at small incremental um, changes. Do not let, uh, do not tell them to go for the and uh, the, the the whole work. Uh, if they can start with improving the law, the soil condition, improve the water condition, step by step they will reach the uh, entire requirement. Uh, they will be able to meet the entire requirements. They can do that. So make it easy for them to understand and, and implement the practices. You see, this is the uh, shed for the tools and the chemicals, and this is for the meeting room. I think that's a uh, yes, okay. I'm sorry, um, five minutes.
uh, firm, not not really farmer. Yeah, multi something like that. I think I have some suggestion in our experience. Uh, of course, farmer already have a small small area only, but also trees. First of all, we need them to be approved. So all of the budget they will be given to the farmer that are in the group, not in in individual, something like that. And other ways, of course, work together with other institution. So the GEP will be will be running well, nothing like that. I think in Philippines you have uh, more resources compared to us, but uh, maybe work together that we did. And also you already choose the correct uh, correct communities and this banana that are mostly available in short part of Philippines. Okay. I think this uh, my share can be a good thank you. Thank you very much.